Hey creative people and welcome back to another HitFilm Express tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to create these awesome light flares in HitFilm. Lens flares were usually seen as a bit of a bad thing because they're basically just artifacts, light coming through the lens and creating these distortions. However, as film and lenses progressed, it was easier and easier to remove these and these lens flares now became this artistic stylistic choice. You can use these to add some drama or some atmosphere to your footage, or you can use them in titles, or you can use them when compositing to add realism to fake scenes. Before we begin, I do have a difficulty rating on each of my HitFilm tutorials just to let you know how fast or how slow I'm going to be going through everything. And today's video is going to be rated 2 out of 5 on the difficulty scale. It will be a beginner tutorial, but you will need to know the basics of HitFilm. Such basics of HitFilm start with how to create a composite shot. I'm in my composite shot here already, and uh, if you don't know how to create a composite shot, uh, just right click on your footage either in the media panel or in the editor and click make composite shot. But I've got a composite shot here with our footage in it. You don't need to have a composite shot and you can use this in the editor as well perfectly fine, but the composite shot is just better for a ton of the stuff we're going to be doing today with tracking and a lot of that other stuff which is not necessary but it's just easier for me to show you. But let's get into it. So to add your lens flare, it's really great because before in HitFilm, in HitFilm 3 Express for example, you had to actually find lens flare images or assets online and drag them in and try to composite them in HitFilm. But with HitFilm 4 Express, they added the light flares effect, which is basically a lens flare. So just search up for light flare and it'll appear under lights and flares. And in fact, if we go to lights and flares, just the whole uh, folder, you can see we've got two really great ones here, glow and light flares. These are really two great ones in the Express version. You also have a ton of ones which, uh, which are really good with add-ons or in the pro version of HitFilm, but light flares is the one we want to use. So just drag it onto your video. And a little bit of a side note as well, if you did want to buy any of these other light flares, then uh, you can use the link in the description. It'll take you over to the HitFilm store. And if you use the code SHINY10 at checkout, you'll get 10% off as well. It's just a little deal that HitFilm and I uh, made together. So if you want to get 10% off, uh, make sure you use the code SHINY10 and I'll get a little bit of that commission as well, uh, but you'll get 10% off as well. Anyway, you can use light flares in the HitFilm Express, the free version, so let's go ahead and figure out how to do that. You'll notice as soon as we've added our effect in, we've got this one beautiful looking light flare. You can drag it around just by clicking on it and dragging it around, and you'll notice that it's very organic and it's very dynamic. We have all these other lens elements here, and if we just click and drag, you'll notice that they change, they move around with our video. This is the great advantage of having a light flare effect, which is generated here rather than dragging some kind of image on. It's much more organic and it looks much nicer. Let's go into the controls panel here. Just open up the controls. It might be in a different place for you depending on your layout. But then open up your effects and open up your light flares and we have a bunch of different properties. We're gonna go through every single one of these properties in this video. This is gonna be an in-depth tutorial into this light flare effect. But the first thing you need to know is that the flare type can be adjusted. There are tons of different flare types. You start off with 105 millimeter prime, but you've also got the classic 35 millimeter prime. Uh, but you've also got a ton of other really creative ones in HitFilm as well. Some notable ones are micro particle streak, which looks really cool. This sun glare, which is just a nice glare, which is really useful for a bunch of different variety of situations. You've got special ones this, like these light sword clashes and this laser dot. You've got all of these lovely chromatic ones. You've got these chromatic hoops such as that. You've got this chromatic halo, which is really cool. You've also got these chromatic arcs, which are also pretty cool. And uh, one which I like to use a lot is actually digital blocks. It's this really nice modern sci-fi looking light flare, and uh, I love it to bits. But today we're actually going to be using this one called Golden Artifacts, at least to start off with. Uh, and that'll just work really well as the sun, but it has this slightly modern feel, and it has this slightly digital feel as well, so it's the best of both worlds, really. Now let's go ahead and go into the hotspot position. Here you can adjust the hotspot position exactly with values. Of course, you can also adjust the hotspot position just by clicking on the hotspot and dragging it around. Now they've also got a use layer function here. And this is actually really important because if you want to attach it to some kind of object in your video which you've tracked, then you can do that. And I've actually tracked an object in my video here. You can see I've got this tracker here. And if I go to the track panel and the layer over here, you can see I've tracked this area here. I'm not going to go into detail on how to track at all in this video. If you want to know how to motion track, I'll leave a link in the description to a tutorial on how to do that. But I'm just going to create a new point layer. And then I'm just going to apply this data to that point layer and hit apply like so. And now if we go back to our viewer and our controls panel, 
Let's select this point and you can see that it's tracked to this object in the background. This is really useful because now we can attach our light flare to this point. So just go and select your light flares effect. And if I show use layer and I select that point and I just zero out the values like so by clicking and selecting zero, you can see it's just attached to that point and it still looks dynamic with all of this movement and everything like that. It still looks like a dynamic light flare, but it's just attached to that point in the distance. I'm just going to adjust it slightly. I can adjust the position like so, just that it's more in the horizon like there and it'll still remain tracked to that point. Cool, now let's go into the pivot position. The pivot position is just this thing over here and it just pivots where all the other lens elements go. For example, all of this, this uh, golden stuff over here, that uh, pivots where all of that goes, but you can leave it on zero, zero, and it should work pretty good. Sorry, not that one, you can leave this one on zero, zero. Now let's go to the intensity, scale, blend mode, and all the rest of these global settings. These settings aren't in global here because they're kind of really important, these settings here, but they are all, all these settings here are global, meaning they affect every single part of the light flare. You'll notice here we have hotspot, rays, and other elements. Those are the three parts of light flare which you, can, which you can adjust the properties of individually, but all of these settings right here are global, so they affect everything. To first look at what we're doing, we're just going to actually go into the blend mode. The default is screen, which creates this really nice brightening effect. But if we select none, you can see just the light flare in action. And this is really useful when I'm explaining all of these properties over here. Intensity is basically the brightness of the flare. So everything will become much brighter and much stronger if we increase the intensity or much weaker and much dimmer if we don't. And the scale is pretty self-explanatory as well. It just increases all of the elements within our footage here. You can leave it on the default and it will look pretty good. And by the way, just a quick tip, you can click right click reset on, on any property or any group of properties like that. And of course, you can also do it on the effect as well. And the shortcut is control R and that'll reset everything. But of course, I'm just gonna undo that so we get back here. So that's intensity and scale. And blend mode here again defines how the light flare blends or mixes with the background. On none, it just shows that. On normal, you can see it's just that light flare asset placed just directly on top of our video. But two ones which you need to know are the screen, which looks really great. But depending on what light flare you have, it can look a little bit fake. So you can also use add, which is a much stronger effect. It'll lose some of the detail and the look of the light flare, but it'll make sure it really paces it on really brightly onto our footage. But we're just gonna leave it at the default screen for now. I'm just going to go into the global, actually to look at these global settings, I'm just gonna put it back on none so we can look at our light flare. All of these global settings really adjust the look of our flare, mainly the color. You can select a custom color here, which we will be doing, but also just to show you, you can adjust the hue shift here if you just wanna shift it over to another color. For example, a blue, a purple, you can just shift it over here and it won't change any of the brightness or any of the other properties. I'm just going to reset this to zero and show you that you can also create a custom color just by clicking on the color wheel here, the color palette there, sorry. And for example, if I wanted this to be this nice teal blue, I could do that like so. But of course, if you reset it to 255, 255, 255, it'll give you just that default color. The gamma is kind of like the brightness and it works really well if you wanna create some kind of dim distant light source like so. But uh, I wouldn't mess around with this too much because gamma has it's uh, ups and downs and you don't really wanna mess around with this unless you really know what you're doing. The saturation though is easy enough to understand. It's basically just the strength of all the colors. You can make it really vibrant like so, or completely black and white. I'm just gonna make mine a little bit more vibrant than normal. Now let's go ahead and open up all of these. Hotspot, rays, and other elements. The main things to focus on here are similar to here. We have intensity and scale here. And similarly here, we have brightness and scale. And we've also got our color adjustments as well. But before we adjust these, let me actually just tell you which each of these are. The hotspot you already know is this little hotspot here. The rays is the rays here and it changes depending on which one you're using, but this can be a ray as well. For example, this side one here, all of those rays directly around this point. And the other elements is usually all of these different squares and bubbles coming around here. Let's go ahead and adjust the brightness of the hotspot to see what it does. And it's basically like the intensity, except it just adjusts the hotspot, which is pretty cool. 
You can also adjust the, adjust the color of just the hotspot and of course the scale as well, all pretty self-explanatory. The rays here, let's open up the brightness and you can see that it actually affects all of these elements here as well as this element here and these elements here. So the rays in this effect affect quite a lot. Of course, you do have your default brightness as well, as well as the quantity scale, which is a little bit different. You'll notice that if we increase the quantity scale, we'll get more of these rays jutting out of the hotspot there. Sorry, not the brightness, the quantity scale. We'll get more of those rays jutting out there, but it can look a little bit weird depending on what effect you're using. So unless you know what you're doing, it's probably best to leave it on one. You can also rotate the rays around like so. And you can also adjust the length scale to make them longer or the width scale to make them wider and often softer as well. I'm just gonna leave all of those on the default though. And we can see that the other elements are basically these squares here. So we can increase the brightness if we really like those and change the color and the scale of course as well. And that's basically all of the properties of the light flares. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways to use them just a couple of tips and tricks. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select this to screen, make sure I increase the saturation quite a bit here. And I'm just going to increase the scale a little bit and the intensity like so. Now that's looking pretty good for me, but I also might want to have just some kind of like extra glare. And what you can do with light flares is often you can combine them. Now some will work better with others than uh, other ones, but if we just select the effect and hit Control D on our keyboard, then it'll duplicate that effect. If we open it up, it'll have all of our different position properties and everything still restored there. But if we can just change this to, for example, a sun glare, and we'll just add this nice glare on top of all of this other spike. One final tip, because these uh, assets are of course digitally made by the computer, they do look a little bit fake. And of course, some of the lines here might appear too sharp, or they just might appear a little bit too harsh. And to get rid of that kind of digital computer generated look, what you can do is just select these effects by clicking on one of them, then shift, holding shift or control, either of them work and clicking on the other one. And then you can press control X and that'll cut them, which will delete them and then copy them to your clipboard as well. And if you just create a new layer, a new plane layer, and then make sure it's a black plane layer, and then hit okay. And then just select that plane layer and hit control V and that'll paste those effects back on. Then you can go into the layer properties and reset that blend mode if you so choose. For example, screen, there we go. And that looks exactly the same as it did before. But now we can apply effects to our light flares without adjusting the background as well. Let me show you what I mean. For example, we can blur these like so. And it'll blur the flares without blurring the background. And what you can do is you can also use this diffuse effect, which is basically like a blur, but it has an opacity slider as well. So for example, if we set the opacity to one, it'll just show the blur for us and we can adjust our blur to be whatever we want. And then if we make the opacity 50, it'll show 50% the original like so, and also 50% the blurred version. And it'll just do a nice in between. And finally, you might wanna do some grading on top of your light flares just to make sure that they're really settled into their place. So I'm just going to add a new grade layer and a little bit of a plug here, but I'm just going to add a lot effect. And I did make some five free LUTs for you to use. This is an add-on effect, so you will need to have the pro version to use LUTs. But I am just going to add one of my own LUTs here real quick. And I'm also just going to add a curves to do some basic contrast correction. Of course, I do have a whole video on how to make your video footage look really cinematic and color grading in general, basically. So you can check that out if you want as well. And I'll also leave a link to the video which has these lot files in case you're interested. But uh, anyway, that's how you create these light flares in HitFilm Express. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, then be sure to give it a big thumbs up. It'll help other people find it. And of course, you can subscribe to my channel. I make tons of other HitFilm Express videos like this, as well as tons of other video editing, other software tutorials. You can follow me on Twitter, and I will see you all in the next video. Stay shiny.